Oh hey, in this video I'll show you how to create a screen damage effect to show that the player has taken damage and lost some health. The effect we're going to create is basically a tinted vignette effect blended with some noise. And we will control its intensity through code based on how much damage was inflicted. So let's get started. We're going to do this effect with a full screen pass. So first we're going to create a full screen shader graph and we're going to create a material from this shader as well. Then right click in the scene hierarchy and create a custom pass volume. Set its injection point to before post process and add a full screen pass and assign the material to it. Open the shader graph in the shader editor so that we can start creating our full screen effect. To create a vignette effect, we need to get the UV and turn it into a vector 2. So we plug it into a split node and plug the R and G into the X and Y of a vector 2 node. Then subtract 0.5 from that to get a centered UV and then multiply it by the screen width and height. Add a screen node and plug the width and height into a vector 2 and plug that into the multiply. Then plug the result of the multiply into a distance node and divide it by the minimum of the screen, which will be the height in landscape aspect ratios. Plug the result of that into a smooth steps T parameter here we will control the radius and smoothness of the vignette effect. Add two float properties for the radius and the smoothness. And plug the radius into the first slot. And add the radius to the smoothness and then plug it into the second slot. We use the result of this for the time of a lerp node to control the opacity or the darkening of the vignette. So add another float property for the darkening and plug it into a 1 minus node and then into the B slot of the lerp. The A slot should be 1. And this creates the vignette mask. If we now multiply this with the HD scene color node and output the result, we would see a vignette effect. You can adjust the vignette's properties on the material. I'll set the darkening and smoothness to 1 and control the intensity of the vignette with its radius. We want this vignette effect to be red, so let's add a color property called tint and we will lerp the screen to this color with the vignette mask. That creates a Japan flag for us, which means we have to lerp from the color to the screen instead. Our vignette effect is very soft and smooth, so let's blend it with a noise. Now it conveys a better sense of damage. Next we can use this vignette mask to blur the screen as well. In HDRP we can use the MIP map level or the LOD of the HD scene color node to blur the screen. We plug the mask into a lerp node so that we can have different blurness values for the center and the edges of the screen. We can create float properties for those values and plug them here. We don't want the center of the screen to blur when there's no vignette, so we subtract radius from the center's blur and then plug it into the lerp. So 
So as you can see now, we have blurriness on the edges and the center of the screen and we can control how much from the material. And we can control the damage effects intensity with the vignette radius property and we will do that through code. So a radius of 1 would be for when there's no damage and a radius of 0 0.4 for the least amount of damage and minus 0.15 seems to be a good value for the max amount of damage. So we will write a code that sets the vignette's radius property to those values based on the intensity of the damage. Here we will need a reference to the material so that we can set value to those properties. And we will need a method that we can call when we want the damage effect to happen. And this method will take an intensity parameter. We will also need a remap function to make the intensity go in a range between 0.4 to minus 0.15 instead of 0 to 1. A remap function finds the time of interpolation of a value in a range and uses it to produce another value in a different range. We want to animate the damage effect so let's create a coroutine and we will start this coroutine from the screen damage effect method. In the coroutine we will remap the intensity to find the value we need for the vignette's radius. Then we will have a current radius variable that we will interpolate it from 1 to this target radius in a for loop. And then we adjust the material's vignette radius property with that interpolating value. And after we reach that radius, we want to animate it to fade out again. So copy the for loop and this time we want to go from the target radius to 1. We don't want multiple coroutines to change the vignette's radius at the same time, so we store the running coroutine in a variable and stop it before starting a new one. We can now test this by calling the screen damage effect with random intensities when we have mouse clicks. Don't forget to attach this script to a game object and assign the material. And we can also add some camera shake with Cinemachine. Add a Cinemachine impulse source to the game object that holds the damage effect. And make sure that the main camera has a Cinemachine impulse listener component attached to it. In the code, import the Cinemachine namespace, then add a reference to the impulse source. And down here in the coroutine, we can generate an impulse. We can set the impulse's velocity to be based on the direction of the damage, but for now we will just move it down and back a bit. Then we can multiply this velocity with the damage intensity 
and you can also multiply it with another multiplier to control the overall strength. Assign the impulse source in the script's inspector and press play. Our effect is done, but we're not quite done yet. We need to make it easier to call this method from other scripts. And one way we can do that is to add a public static reference to the active object or instance of this class in the scene. But we can do something cooler. We can make this static reference to be private and then we can declare a public static class within the existing class and we can give it a better and cooler name as well, something like special effects. And then we can make all the methods in the outer class to be private and have a public static method in the other class which would just call those private methods. And doing it like that, we can now call this method from any other script. And the way we can access it is really clean and cool. You can use this full screen material to create a dying effect as well. But of course, we're not going to cover that in this video. I'll leave that up to you. And all of what we covered in this video also works on URP except that we can't blur the screen in the screen color node. All right, that wraps up this video. Uh, drop a comment and a like and stay tuned till next week for another video. And until then, peace out.